How easy is it to double a $200 bankroll by playing just five numbers straight up in roulette? I programmed 100,000 bots to find out, and today we're going to go over all kinds of results. And you're going to want to stay to the end for this one because the odds of success get better the more times you play, but only up to a limit, and we're going to find out what that limit is. My name is Matt, and I run simulations of craps and roulette systems. You may know me from my other channel, Dice Data, and I'm just getting started with these roulette simulations. So if you enjoy the video, I would very much appreciate it if you would like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share the video with your friends. That will help me get off to a great start. The setup for this system is very simple. It's just one fifth of the table minimum on five straight up numbers. The table minimum we're working with today is $25. So it's $5 each on the 10, 15, 18, 19, and 25. The bots are going to start with $200 and they're going to play until they either double their money or until they exhaust their entire bankroll. So let's dive in. Okay, so we have $5 each on the 10, 15, 18, 19, 25. That's $25 on the table. Let's spin and see how we do. Seven red. Seven, that's a total loss. So we lost $25. Let's get set up again. 36 red. Another loss. We're down $50 total. 15 black. All right. We hit on the 15. So this time we won $175 on the 15, but we lost $20. We lost four of those straight up bets. So we netted $155. Let's try it again. Zero green. Remember, we're trying to get the net profit to $400 and then we're going to stop. 18 red. All right, there's another hit. 18. 13 black. Get whacked there. Five red. Whack another whack. One red. Another whack. We still have $160 though. Red. 18 red. All right, we hit the 18. We're up to $290 in uh, the net profit right now. 18 red. And there, this bot hit the profit goal. $445 won. That means they're going to stop. Now we're going to simulate this, but we're going to do it 100,000 times, and we're going to see how often this is actually going to work. All right, so here's the simulation report. This is what you get when you order a custom simulation with me. There's a whole bunch of information. We're just going to hit the big parts today. And we're going to start off by looking at the simulation parameters. So we have three wheel types that we simulated today. Each one of those is going to have 100,000 bots. Now, on average, it took about 22 spins for the bots to complete. So that means they either, they either um, hit their win goal or they exhausted that $200 bankroll. Our base bet is $5, initial bankroll $200, win goal is $200 over our initial bankroll. We start off by looking at the house metrics. Now the house edge on single zero, this came out to 2.55. It's just a little bit lower than the theoretical number, which is 2.7%. That's a moderate house edge. When you get up to double zero, it becomes elevated. Triple zero it becomes substantial. And you're going to see that throughout the report that the higher house edges are going to cost more, which means bigger losses or smaller wins throughout the throughout the report. So of these 100,000 bots, how often were they able to actually make money at the end of their session? Well, 28.2% of the bots made money on a single zero wheel, 25.9% on the double zero wheel, and only 23.9% on the triple zero wheel. So this table is the breakdown of why the bots actually stopped playing. Why did they end their session? 71.6% of them ended because of insufficient funds. They didn't have enough money to go on to the next round. A little under 1% stopped because they hit the maximum spins. And I set the maximum spins to 100. So under 1% were able to keep playing all the way through 100 spins without either exhausting their bankroll or hitting that $400 win goal. And then another 27.5% hit their win goal and they stopped at that point. And then of course, once you introduce additional zeros onto the wheel, those numbers start to look worse. So the insufficient funds definitely increases while the win goal percentages decrease as you add additional zeros to the wheel. Here's the histogram of that profit and loss. So you have on the x-axis the amount that is won or lost. 
on the y-axis the percentage of bots and each chart is for a different wheel type so on the single zero here's that 71.8 percent and you see the group here that won anywhere from you know four hundred dollars all the way up to even six hundred dollars in some cases as part of my work i see all kinds of different strategies and i always tend to like the ones that really have wins that significantly outweigh the losses. And the reason for that in this strategy is because those wins, they're going to pay $175, really $155 when you win. And that's a big difference compared to that $5 that you actually bet. You can really see that play out in this chart. This is the session wins and loss magnitudes. Now, what this is saying is that when the bots win, on average, they're winning $445. But when the bots lose, they're losing on average $195 only. And that ratio drives some of the other metrics that we're going to be looking at later in the report. This is the strategy risk profile. Now on the X axis, we have how often do the bots actually win? And on the Y axis, they have that ratio of how much they're winning. So we have here, for example, red and black, how often it, they're going to win just under 50% of the time. But when they win, they're only going to win one times their bet because it's a one to one payout. These strategies fall right here, just at the bottom of the lottery ticket section. So they are able to double. They're actually just over doubling their money, but they're over here because it's a little less likely to hit than something like, say, the red black, which is just under 50%. These are examples of some of the sessions. If you look at the median one, they lost a few times, then they hit once, and then they lost a bunch of times and ended up losing that $195. The average one looks a little bit different. The lucky one is interesting. Look at all these different hits that they have over here, a whole bunch of them, um, and ultimately ended up winning exactly $400. The very unlucky one, that's just, you know, blowing right through and, and not winning ever at all. And then the very lucky ones, those ones um, were pretty quick, but they, they hit that win goal fairly fast and ended up being able to multiply it without having to like have those $25 bets and those wax kind of eroded over time. These are the spin outcomes. So we really just have two spin outcomes, right? We either gonna have a whack or we're gonna have a jackpot. These are entirely based on the five out of 37, five out of 38 or five out of 39, depending on how many zeros are on the wheel. The profit and loss per spin also can really only have two outcomes. It's either a $25 loss or a $155 win. Um, notice on average, though, it's just a one or two dollar loss. And I think that this is kind of illustrative of what happens when we think about the house edge, right? In reality, the house edge just eats away very slowly. But in our experience of playing, we either have two outcomes, $25 won or $25 lost or $155 won. That's all that's going to happen. So notice how different this average is because that's just not a number that we experience when we're playing at the table. On this strategy, I thought the consecutive streaks was really interesting because it's such a cool chart. So on the x-axis, we have the number of consecutive streaks that the players experience during their session. And on the y-axis, we have the percentage of sessions that experience that. So most likely was eight, a streak of eight losses in a row that happened 35.8 percent of the time on the single zero and that's just straight eight losses and you're out but look at all the other ones there's uh definitely some interesting shape happening there and when it comes to consecutive wins most of the time it's just one um 24 almost one out of four had two consecutive wins 3.3 percent had three consecutive wins and just 0.2%, so that's two out of every thousand, had four consecutive wins, which was, of course, the maximum that any of them experienced in the simulation. This is the bankroll section. So how much money did the bots need to play this strategy? Now, we know that we gave them a bankroll of $200, but not all the bots needed their entire bankroll to play the strategy. And you can see that the typical amount that they needed was $195 because there were some wins. The middle 50% were between $175 and $200. The middle 90% are between, you know, $45, $50 up to $200. And look at this, the minimum was $25. So in some cases, the bots were able to just do that first bet, $25, 
They won money right away and they never had to outlay any additional money whatsoever. But it was a small percent that was able to do that. Now, this is the return on outlay. So we're still talking about the money that came out of the bot's pockets. How often were the bots able to double it? Well, 20, almost 28% were able to double their money and very close to that 27.6%, almost, you know, a little over one out of every four was able to triple their outlay using the strategy. 21.5%, so really one out of five was able to four times their outlay, 17.1% five times, and 6.9%, almost 7% were able to do 10 times their outlay. So very nice wins with some of this. And we see that because, again, they're hitting that 35 to one payout. Betting power is how much action they get per dollar that they're investing out of their own pocket. So for every $100 that the bots are paying out of their pocket, they're getting about $335, $320 in total bets. And that's money that they're recycling, that the bets that they're making, that they're not taking out of their own pocket. So here's another interesting one, volatility. With this strategy, this is an extreme volatility strategy. And uh, look at this, you know, 246% of the bet size is being won and lost on single rounds. And the reason for that is because, again, these are 35 to 1 payouts, so and you're only making $5 bets. So that creates a high volati volatility that we saw in some of the earlier charts. Profit retention is really interesting because it talks about how often the bots were able to hang on to their money. Look at this. Between 4 and 5% were profitable the entire time. So they started making money, they stayed profitable, and they never went below zero. About a third to just over a third were down. So they were down the entire time. They lost money right away. They stayed down and they never recovered. Anywhere from 23 to 20% 20 were able to recover their money. So they started down and then they were able to recover. We're going to look at more of that in the next section. And then roughly 40% gave back their money. So they actually started higher and then ended up giving back whatever they won. Let's look at the recovery swing first. So again, same number of bots that we saw earlier. Typical recovery is anywhere from 80 to $85. The middle 50% is between 50 and 125. That range goes out a little bit more for the middle 90% and of course for the full range. The maximum that any of the bots were able to recover was $175. And that's the nature of the strategy because of the way that they won. Here are some of those good recoveries. On the x-axis, we have the uh, spin number, and on the y-axis, we have the profits. So you can see they had a bunch of down spells, then hit a couple in, in succession, another down spell, hit, down, hit, and then a couple hits, and then ended up with a pretty nice profit right there. And you see that happening in a few other places in, throughout this chart. Look at this one. This one kind of went back and forth, you know, all over the place. When it comes to profit given back, this is usually just a little bit of a larger number, as you can see here. The typical amount that was given back, this is again the median $155. The middle 50% is anywhere from $85 to $240. And you can see the other numbers. The maximum that was given back was $395. We can look at those and see what that looks like. Here, this is bought $80,104, gave back $395. Fix that get back $395. And you can see, look at this choppy situation here. They were down, hit a couple wins, then they got all the way up to almost $400. So they were at that $395. If they had gotten to that $400, they would have stopped at that point, but then just had some really bad sessions. They still hit a couple times, and then that last one brought them all the way down, almost to $200 lost, and that's where they ended up having to quit because they didn't have any more bankroll. This table talks about how many spins the bots were able to last. Typical value was 15, that's the median. Middle 15% is between 8 and 29 spins. Um, the middle 90% is between 8 and 62 spins. And then the range, the full range is between 3 and 100. So look at that, some of them were in 3. So in those cases, they hit those first 3, and then they hit their win goal, and they were able to stop. In these cases... They had, these are the cases where they were just eroding $25 at a time until they spent their $200. Now I want to talk about what happens when the bots play multiple sessions. So they're going to play this one session. They're going to stop at, you know, losing $200 or winning $400. What if they do that multiple times? Now, you might think that the more that you play, 
it guarantees that you're going to have more of a loss. And that's true over the very long term. But check this out. On the short term, it actually gets better at 10 sessions. So look at this one session on a single zero wheel, 28.2% success rate. But 10 sessions on a single zero wheel, 41.3% success rate. And that success rate means, did they win any money at all? That starts to go down again, 39.6, then 35.7, then it goes down to 30, 24, and ends as high as I went, which was 500 sessions at 13.3. It's a little bit counterintuitive, right? Because if you're playing multiple times, you expect the house to take over their advantage. But what's happening is those wins are so much larger than the losses that having multiple opportunities to have a win within a small amount actually makes it a little bit better for the players and gave the bots more additional chances to catch up. But that of course starts to go down and notice how much it, faster it goes down on the double and triple zero roulette wheel. We're starting off lower, we don't go up as high. And once you get up to 500 sessions, there's basically no chance to be successful with this strategy on a triple zero roulette wheel and very small chance on a double zero. And of course, on a single zero, that will ultimately get to zero, but it takes a little bit longer. Now it's time for our true score analysis. This is how I rate strategies. We're on the single zero roulette wheel. I'm calling this five inside house edge, moderate. That's what comes with a single zero roulette wheel. Profit and loss balance, there are rare huge wins, and that's multiple times what the actual bankroll is. Volatility is extreme because those wins are such a big difference as compared to the actual amount that you're actually betting. Jackpot factor is limited, and the reason for that is because we're actually stopping with this win goal. If we didn't have a win goal, this might get a little interesting because there would be a few sessions that just win a whole bunch of times and win a huge jackpot. But uh, since we have the bot stopping at $400, they're really never going to get to that multiple times their bankroll jackpot with this system. And betting power is limited. This is short sessions with limited action. Remember, the length of session median was just 15 spins, which could be roughly half an hour at the table. Player ratings, not so much a strategy for the comp grinder, but the entertainment seeker, jackpot hunter, and paycheck player all got three stars. And the bankroll, $200 in all cases. For the other table types, we came out basically the same. Um, the only difference is the house edge uh, definitely increases. So we don't have any change in the stars here. And once we get up to the triple zero, that's where the entertainment seeker drops down to two stars. And that's really because of the high cost of play when you're playing at a triple zero roulette wheel. So that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, I really appreciate it. If you would subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and share it with other people who would be interested in roulette analytics. If you have a strategy that you want me to simulate, I'm going to put the link to submit a strategy down in the comment section below. So let me know what you have, and I'd love to get into it. As always, have good luck at the table, and thanks for watching.